Welcome, everyone, to Midday Magazine for this March 20th, 2024. Have your host, James J. Mayloff, here. At part two today at 3.30, we're to welcome in Wisconsin Senator Patrick Teston. Looking forward to talking with him. Right now, we have Wisconsin Rapids Mayor Shane Blazer with us. Good to see you, Shane. Good morning, James. Oh, dang, man. Sorry about that. Hey, good to have you. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I'm used to number two being up in here. I'm sorry about that. Um, appreciate uh, the time, Shane. We'll talk more with you in a moment. I want to thank our good friends over at Wisconsin Rapids Community Media. Big shout out to you guys. We appreciate you. Do yourself a favor. Go to YouTube, type into your search bar, Wisconsin Rapids Community Media, subscribe to their page and keep up to date on all the great work that they are doing over there. Shane, uh, we have been doing a lot of interviews this past week. Oh. A lot of candidates. It's a, it's a political time of year for us, uh, certainly with the April 2nd election coming up. We've got uh, a lot of candidates we've been having on the air, and a big thank you to all of them for joining us. And, of course, Pam Hilke and the scheduling she does with that. Um, but with that going on and with this being uh, uh, your last official time with us uh, as mayor in this position, one of the things that I thought would be uh, good to do is you know, something you and I really cha uh, challenged the community about – doing more public service, being a part of the communities, being on boards, a lot of that. I've been asking all of our candidates how they have enjoyed the experience, how it has been for them. So I'm going to kind of do the same thing with you for a second here. As you're wrapping up your term uh, at your terms as mayor, uh, how have you enjoyed the experience? How was campaigning? How has it been being mayor? Wow, that's a, that's it's a, a big question. Big question. <laughs> First one out the gate, man. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I... I've enjoyed it overall. You know, the campaigning obviously is campaigning. It's tough. It, it's, you know, it's not always always enjoyable, and it's expensive. You know, you, you know, advertisements and print are not cheap. But uh, you know, you got to do it to be able to get your kind of platform out there. And and if you don't have those finances, it does make it a little tougher. Or, you know, fortunately, people locally will donate to help that and so if you have people donating to your campaigns it definitely helps and if you don't then maybe it's a message that maybe you're not doing something right but um, especially in a mayor's race you know, automatic races really aren't that expensive mm -hmm. um, pretty easy to do um, as for my time as mayor overall I've definitely enjoyed it um, you know staff is talking to Taylor here you know staff has very been a very important part of it for me because I believe our staff is our connection to you know the residents and, and that customer service end of it and, and so I felt that you know if we have a good strong staff and I always said if I can steal good employees from, from other communities we're doing something right and unfortunately we've taken a lot of employees from other communities mm -hmm. and and whether it be in fire and police also lateral transfers and things like that so you know it's about creating an environment because I believe, you know, the stronger employees that we have, the better product hopefully we can put out there to the public. Mm -hmm. You know, people, I always say, you know, people are asking me, and matter of fact, even this morning I was on a phone conversation, you know, people and problems kind of just kind of exhaust you after a mm -hmm. while, though. And, and, you know, a lot of times you don't hear from the positive. You know, once in a while mm -hmm. we have people stop in, you know, the, I'm thankful the dog park has been so, so well received, and I've received a lot of positive comments that kind of help uh, push out some of the negativity. But, yeah, the, the, it's exhausting, mm -hmm. and and it just it, it, for me, I was able to deflect it for a long time, but then you start internalizing it sometimes after a while, and finally, it just got to the point that it was just no longer worth it. Mm -hmm. and, I, and my health suffered, and I was putting on weight, and mm -hmm. you know, I was just kind of taking on a little too much, and um, and I st and I started you know taking that in. So, but you know, generally overall, it was a very good experience. I've met a lot of great people, and we do have a great community. We have a lot of amazing people in this community that do a lot of things for the community. Yeah, and getting involved is very important. And so even in my office, we're, um, we're working on trying to transition document for the next mayor about even just the appointments that they need to make. And, and as soon as that election is over with getting that document to that person and having them be able to start on that instead of showing up the first day and trying to figure out, oh, I need, I know, I need these positions mm -hmm. filled. And so... Well, I'm, I'm happy to hear that overall the experience was uh, positive for you and, and, and appreciate all the transparency, as always. Always, our, all of our conversations have been that way. Um, on one side of it, I, I do think it's it's noteworthy and important for people, whether they're thinking about running for office, but maybe even more importantly, if they're not, uh, or just a, a normal citizen, if you will, um, because we're... 
it, it's going to be it's becoming harder and harder to get people to do public service, oh, yeah. to run for offices, to uh, be on boards for the right reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, we uh, our whole lives have seen the one issue candidate, yep. the person who has this one thing, so they think that that makes them you know uh, not only worthy of being on a board or a mayor or a president or something like that, but um, that's all they got, and that doesn't really. That doesn't really help, you know, our community or, or help a board or, or something like that. There's there's a lot of keys to this job, to, to doing this, and I appreciate the transparency of showing some of that. But I also uh, think it's important to note these things because if we're going to ask people to run for office, mm-hmm. uh, accountability is key. And, and I'm not at all saying that there doesn't need to be accountability. Every I don't think anybody that's an adult out there doesn't believe that there shouldn't be an accountability. Right. But the idea of being a keyboard coward, the right. idea of just being a dog that barks and not having any any positive things to say or anything to bring to the, the conversation. Uh, you and I deal with this a lot, and I think, in our jobs separately, where you have the person, hey, you're doing this wrong. You're doing, okay, what is your suggestion? Oh, I got nothing. Like, you, oh, you never do. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> well, what are you doing? What are you doing? Right, yeah, if, right. if you got a complaint, you you better have a solution. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you, you, what are you doing? Right. Uh, and, and if we want people to run for mayor, we want people to be on school boards and these things, we have to walk that line in that balance of, yes, accountability and, and, you know, speaking our mind as we are Americans and everything. But also, they're a human being. They're a neighbor. They're, they're somebody's uh, kid. They're somebody, they are the parent of somebody, possibly. These are human beings. And getting back to that, I, uh, we're going to lose more and more people like yourself, sir, the more we don't pr- uh, notice these things and, and do something about them. Yeah, you know, I always say we, we elect our leaders through a democratic process, but we don't lead by dem- being democratic, you know. Mm-hmm. And so for me, yeah, I was elected by the people, but... My leadership, I don't take a poll and then decide. You know, I, I, I take in information, especially from department heads. They're, they're the ones that are knowledgeable in the field or from the citizens. But just because one person elected me to the office doesn't mean that whatever they say, they get to decide. It's really about, okay, this is, I've been elected. I kind of, this is who I am. And this is kind of what I believe. But and I'm going to do things that way. Mm-hmm. And but I'll take in information. And so it's really important to remember that just because you vote for a candidate now, you don't get to decide what that candidate does and doesn't do. It's really it's really not how it works and nor can it work because it's impossible because everybody's got an opinion. So it's really about trusting the person and hoping that, uh, you know, when we elect them, that they'll follow through, at least be the person that they are, are portraying that they're being and then go forward. But, yeah, we we. I've always believed that, though, you know, and that's yeah. how I tried to lead to, and and just be, and sometimes I've had struggled with it just because there's a, a department head that says and believes that we should do something or or a chief, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's what we're going to do. You know, mm-hmm. it's really about us taking that information in, whether it be council or the mayor or county board, well, all all of our elected offices, and it's really about taking that information and trying to make the best decision, but can't always do what they want to do are you glad you ran i am i am you know i I, you know i I think it's important you know i i disagreed with the leadership at the time um and so it's put your money where your mouth is and and stop complaining and do something about it and i ran and i won you know and it was just i always say that you know leadership has its time and so at that time the community decided that we needed to go in a different direction and um, I, I, I knew I wasn't in this for a career or a lifetime and, um, two or three terms in my mind, kind of what I was thinking. And, and it's now it's time for me to step away and let new leadership come in and bring something fresh. Cause with the, with that change, you have new, new, fresh ideas and different things. And so, and it's easy to get stale and stagnant and, and yeah. I, I'm, I'm there, you know, yeah, and, and yeah. unfortunately I'm there and it's time for that change. And I recognize that change. I, I just, it's time for somebody else to take a turn. Not a lot of people uh, catch that when no. it happens. I think I, I admire that you did. Uh, and then you have and that you care that much about the community and the mm-hmm. position to do something like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, we know that construction, there's a couple of things that we know. It's, it springs mm-hmm. around the corner. Mm-hmm. Baseball, construction, those orange cones. Uh, we've got some construction going on in the area. I wanted to let everybody know about. Yeah, you know, there's a street closure that went out for um, Lincoln and Chestnut. So 
uh, if you've been on Lincoln Street, uh, a if you've been on it previously, you know it's probably one. Of, it's a rumble, rumble track. It's it's rough. It, it was horrible. Um, so it's set to be redone this year from the expressway to Grand Avenue, and it's got all the new infrastructure, all new road, and uh, obviously in Lincoln High, in front of sorry, in East Junior High, it used to be Lincoln High School, East Junior High, or the middle or the high school or the middle school, mm-hmm. the junior high school there. Um, all the trees were cut down, and unfortunately, the uh, median is no longer going to be part mm-hmm. of that, and there's just no need for it. But there's going to be a, a recreation trail mm-hmm. on the west side of the I believe it's the west side of the road, and um, it's going to be nice when it's done. Yeah, and, yeah. and so, but it's it's going to be it's it's a main road, and so it's going to be a kind of a mess, and it's going to be detours, and I'm sure there. And, you know, in front of Quick Trip there, it's going to mm. be a little bottleneck, but mm. uh, they'll get it done as quick as possible, and it'll be much uh. better for it. Uh, it, 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 it anybody uh, over the age of five out there understands construction, that you have a date that you'd like to end and the date that yeah. possibly will end. Do we have an idea of, like, how long this project might take? Just ballpark? I, I couldn't even guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think fortunately, though, and unfor- well, fortunately, the, because of the weather, they were able to get a lot of stuff done. Mm-hmm. I know that I saw... Um, the gas company, they ran all new gas lines mm-hmm. in there. And so a lot of work has been able to get done ahead of time. And unfortunately now with winter coming back for a little bit, mm-hmm. you know, that's going to kind of put that on hold. Um, but I would think given given the, the area, the busyness of the road, they're going to be pushing. Yeah, it's going to take it some time. Yeah, yeah. they're going to push it, though, and push it to get it done quick. Plan accordingly, everybody. Yeah. If, you, uh, if you're if you a Rapids resident, it, one of the things you learn right away is how to get around things, like yeah. especially the train. Like, you, you just you just learn these things. So keep that in mind, everybody. Uh, and, and look out for our workers. Please, oh, please, please, please yeah. slow down. Yeah. Look out for our construction yeah. workers. All they're doing is trying to make our roads safer. Yeah, yeah so let, you, know. you go out to our engineering website, You can they have project updates up there, up there, and they'll have project plans and for the projects and they'll have timelines and then weekly updates you can sign up for um, updates for for road project yeah. updates and um, you can get all that information and stay on top of it and it's a they keep that uh, updated and I, boy, I like the word updated today. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and keep everybody informed there. It's a really good spot. Speaking with Wisconsin Rapids Mayor Shane Blazer, along with our friends from Wisconsin Rapids Community Media. And uh, Shane, there was some city council meetings yesterday. Mm-hmm. Uh, any uh, highlights from that? Any notes from that? Yeah, you know, um, the fire department had, there was a discussion on needing to, rep- we've had a ladder truck here. I'm sure everybody's seen it. It's, it's 30 years old and it's starting to cost money, starting not to be the safest piece of equipment. And so last night, the council voted uh, seven to one to approve replacing that. And if the fire department came forward with, they also have another engine that needs replacing within the next year or so. And so what they've kind of concluded is that our old ladder truck and our old engine um, to take those out of service and just replace it with one new like ladder truck engine. So it's kind of a two for one deal. And I yeah. think it's very financially responsible. Obviously that ladder truck is going to see more time on it than it previously did because it's going to have a dual purpose. But um, so yeah, so replacing those two, the problem is you're, we're talking potentially up to four years before we get that ladder truck. I cannot believe how long it takes for them yeah. to build that. But yeah, once it gets in queue, it's, it's about four years. <laughs> um, but I think it makes financial, it's about 1.5 million, I believe, for for that truck. And But replacing one truck with, uh, well, replacing two trucks with one truck, it makes great financial sense, and I, and I applaud the fire department for, you know, looking at that and really looking at the needs of their equipment and and making that decision And because um, it's got to be done. Either way, you know, if we don't have a ladder truck, all of our, especially our com- commercial, their insurance rates will change, and it'll cost them more. By us having that certification with a ladder truck here, it, it benefits all of us on our even our personal property insurance and things like that. Oh yeah, yeah, it, mm-hmm. it has a, a trickle down effect in yeah. its way. Um, mm-hmm. And and it's important to note uh, with uh, what's going on and not too far from us in their fire department and, and the lack of having people mm-hmm. and, and all that. How important mm-hmm. it is to take care of our fire departments to keep up yeah. the date on these things. Um, it's it's vital and a big thank you to all of our firefighters out there. Yeah. All of our uh, big big appreciation to all. 
all of them. Yeah, as we talk about volunteers, you know, a lot of these communities outlining rapids rely on volunteers. And as people are volunteering less and having less time available, you know, what are these departments going to do? And and that's going to be something that's in the future that's going to have to be discussed and decided. But because they're going to still need fire service, you know, you cannot not have fire service, but Wisconsin Rapids cannot be the fire and ambulance for everybody, yeah. you know, because we as as residents here, we pay a lot of taxes. And so, yeah, you know, maybe I started already having m- mentioning that maybe we need to create a fire district yes. and and start looking at that down the road mm-hmm. as these departments um, start dropping off on volunteers that we all will then contribute to one pot and then the fire service will be provided in that district. And, and it, it's an interesting idea. Uh, it's going to be fascinating to see where it goes. It's mm-hmm. such an important one that's uh, kind of been underreported, I think. Uh, but it, it's definitely, we'll be focused on that. We'll be paying attention to how that develops. Yeah, it's scary though, you know, because yeah. as we, you know, as I spoke last night when we talk about maybe residency here, you know, when I when I applied at the Rapids Police Department in the late '90s, there was hundreds of applicants, mm-hmm. and now we get like five. Yeah. And it's really because who wants to be a police officer or a firefighter? You, you just watch the political atmosphere right now, and and you know, in some of these big cities, how, how their feelings. Well, if I'm 18 years old, that's like, well, why do I want to go do that? Mm-hmm. Well. You know, at some point here, if that happens and it continues, that's to be the trend. What are we going to do if we call 911 and there isn't nobody to drive the ambulance there? Or a police officer that only takes severe emergencies and a lot of the things, I don't know. You know, it's, you know, luckily we're in Rapids here and we're not at that point, but there's bigger cities that are having problems recruiting. Well, and this is, this was my point going Mm -hmm. back to earlier about uh, how we treat our our people in these positions. Accountability is important. Nobody's saying that there doesn't need to be accountability, but there's a difference of accountability and, and being a baby. Yep. If I can just be yep. blunt, uh, being a, uh, just a whiny baby that just wants to sit there and whine and complain, mm-hmm. that doesn't solve anything. That doesn't get anything done. All it does is discourage good people from going into these mm-hmm. positions. Um, the the industries that we're touching on here have plenty of outliers and everything, but the majority of people go into public service because that's what their heart calls them right. to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and we're going to... We have an example right here of somebody who was in public service and is leaving in part because of the way people have this society has been and everything. So I, it, I, it's it's right in front of me. I can't not uh, right. touch on it and everything. Well, it's important that we have we treat each other with respect. Yeah, and I, I think you know I would I would think you maybe read Craig Brown's um, resignation letter. Mm-hmm. You know, and even in his position, outlining the negativity and and what that does. And and the problem is. I really believe a lot of these loud peoples are people are in the minority, but we're giving them more credit than what's due, and and we're get, allowing that voice to be the loud voice. And and you're right, and we 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 just need to stop and just yeah. not. Like I said, I I, I kind of got off Facebook here for a while because I just got tired of it. I, I took a break and I'm still mm-hmm. on break, and it, boy, kind of actually nice. But it is nice. But I did a post yeah. on on like March seventh because my best friend was shot and killed in the line of duty in 2003 mm-hmm. on March seventh. So I did a post, and there's I do pictures and blah blah blah. But this year I kind of decided I wasn't going to do pictures. But I I said we we need to stop stop empowering people by liking their Facebook page or liking their comments or following them because some of these people don't realize it, but we like and follow these people because we find it entertaining and funny. Mm -hmm. But the people, when they see those likes and follows, they actually think these are people that are supporting me Mm -hmm. and don't realize their audience really is following them because they're a joke. And and so that's my mission. When I get back on Facebook, I'm just going to kind of clean it up and I'm not going to follow follow that garbage anymore because even for entertainment value or whatever because it's funny it's not funny in the long run Mm -hmm. then we just need to stop well said Mm -hmm. and i couldn't agree with you more tried to do a similar thing on my page and with what i do and the um the the danger the, the this is the thing that does give me hope though uh, because you're right about the 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 major that that barking dog. Mm-hmm. It's a very small minority minority of people doing it that is getting attention because of the 24 hour news cycles yep. and it, it's easy it's easy reporting and that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Blah blah blah. But what gives me hope is seeing more and more people that are are kind of like shaking it off. And yes, it's frustrating. It's done. But like you just said right there, um, I'm you could have easily said I'm I'm done with Facebook. I'm not going back there. Instead. 
No, I'm, I'm going to be part of the change. Yep. I'm going to do some good. Yep. There's more and more and more people that are doing that, especially with the younger generation, where I don't like the, our local politics. Instead of just sitting there and complaining about it, they're actually running for office. Mm-hmm. They're actually doing something. Yep. Uh, we're seeing more and more of that. That does give me hope. Mm-hmm. Maybe the last bit of hope I have in me, but, <laughs> but it gives me a little bit of hope about that. Exactly. Um, as we're <laughs> wrapping up, sir, I did want to touch on uh, the entrepreneur or business owners looking to expand uh, their ventures and everything in the area. Uh, the city's uh, got a lot of the great opportunities for that. So we wanted to encourage people uh, and, and, and uh, that want to grow their business. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that The city of Rapids is looking to do that and looking to help with that. Uh, to learn more, you can contact the director of community uh, development, Kyle Kearns, our good friend Kyle Kearns. I encourage people to do so. It's a, a great opportunity. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, you look at locally growing businesses that have, you know, Thamil, what, mm-hmm. Renaissance Learnings, HHA, you know, there's a lot of great companies here that have their products nationwide. And yeah, I think, I think, you know, having that dream of landing a, a big business, uh, I, I, it's hard, you know, every yeah. community is trying to do it, yeah. but I think supporting our local businesses and helping them grow, you know, I, I won't give much, but I'm going to say that there are and I won't be here to, you know, get across the finish line, but the next council, the next mayor. But we have a couple of great opportunities that are kind of like just stepping through the doorway, which is a good number of jobs and a good mm-hmm. number of economic uh, good, or net new construction and multi millions that sort of investments that are probably going to be happening here in the next year or two. And but it's just kind of just starting out, and it, yeah, there are opportunities coming yeah. in. I guess that's about all I can share on that. <laughs> I don't want to get you in trouble. Right, either, so, yeah. exactly, <laughs> or, or dissuade, but there are some things that are coming forth that are, are going to be good for the community. Yeah. And yeah, are they the shiniest thing out there? No, but um, it will definitely help with some jobs and some value here in the community, and they're coming. And Commerce is commerce. Money's money is mm-hmm. you know? yep. money. Well, we'll take it. Yep. Well, jobs exactly. are jobs. We'll take it. Mm-hmm. doesn't matter shiny or not. Exactly. Um, Shane, uh, this is uh, our last official kind of time talking together and everything. Uh, we, we do hope to have you and our next mayor on together uh, as kind of a transition uh, interview. Uh, looking forward to that. But I did want to let you know, um, and, and I'm speaking for a lot of our community here that I've talked to, that I've polled, uh, you're appreciated. We, we've we appreciated what you've done. You took over this position at a time when uh, our nation was going through a pandemic. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, the city was going through a number of different mm-hmm. issues, and we think we are better for having you as mayor. Thank you for the time. You are appreciated. Well, I appreciate it. And like I told you beforehand, I've always enjoyed our radio shows. And, you know, I, I we do a half hour or so, and I figure we could even fill an hour. And it's yeah. just been really easy to do, and you're very good at your job mm-hmm. and very good at you know, speaking and getting, asking questions and keeping the dialogue going. And, you know, that, that takes a knack. And uh, I've always enjoyed doing radio. I have really good writers. I have, I have like a hundred <laughs> writers that exactly. I go to. No, I appreciate the time as always, <laughs> sir. Thank you. I got, um, and a big thank you to our friends at Wisconsin Rapids Community Media, of course, recording these and getting these out there for people do amazing work. Again, subscribe to their YouTube page. Uh, sir, if anybody has any follow-up questions, want to know more, how can they get in touch with you? Uh, you can always email me at uh, mayor at WIRapids.com. Or you can call my office, 715-421-8202 is my direct line. Uh, Great conversation. Thanks again, as always, Shane. Thank you. We'll be back with more Midday Magazine coming up right here on the uh, middays here at WFHR.